Have you read a really, really, really good pet food label lately? Well, if you haven't, you need to start doing it. The American Association of Feed Control Officials only guarantee when they have that stamp of approval on pet food that it meets certain minimal requirements that will prevent your dog or cat from getting deficiencies, or I should say diseases that could cause deficiencies. It's not necessarily you know, any kind of stamp of approval that it's the best food. You and you alone really are the best judge of the best quality food for your pet. You can get guidance from your veterinarian. You can get guidance from a canine or feline nutritionist. But you're the one who sees your dog or cat every day and should be tuning in and paying attention. Are their eyes bright? Do they have good energy? Is their coat shiny? Their skin not flaky? Can you feel those ribs but not see them? Those are just a few indicators that the food you're using is working well for your pet. But there are so many more things to consider, and I'm just going to touch on a few things today to get those wheels spinning in your head and make you a more pet-savvy, pet-label reader. I'm Denise Flack, the Pet Safety Crusader, and in today's edition, we're definitely talking nutrition for your dog or cat. But I'm also going to talk to you about ways to mix it up a bit and make it more interesting because you don't want to eat the same thing every day, and neither does your furry best friend but we have to be ever so careful with that because if we change their diet, we can also really upset their stomach. But stay tuned, I've got a way to tell you how to mix up their food without upsetting their tummies. But first, I just really want you to stop ignoring the packaging. These pieces um, are, are photographs of carrots and peas and meat aren't necessarily what you're gonna see inside um, the bag. So read those labels. Just like any food we buy for ourselves at the grocery store, on the back of the can or on the back of the bag is an ingredient label. And the actual items in the food are listed in diminishing value. So what you see in the first couple of positions is mainly what's in the bag with the items um, decreasing in amount as you read down the label. So in that very first position, you want to see a whole good quality protein. I know some of you out there, some of my dearest, dearest friends are probably going to um, disagree with me because there is research going on right now about making our pets vegan. But for right now, the Pet Safety Crusader has not seen enough information to um, pr profess that for anyone. I really do believe cats are what are called oblate carnivores, and I think our dogs really need that meat protein and those amino acids as well. I did know a lab or two actually who couldn't process meat and survived very well on a potato um, diet, but you know it was an unusual circumstance. So please don't hate me. You know I'm all for your team there. But right now, I don't believe that the changes we're doing for ourselves, which are good for the environment and for animals as well, necessarily we can attribute to our pets right now. I'm just not seeing the research, and I strongly feel that dogs and cats right now still need protein. So I want you to turn over that bag, turn over that can, and make sure you see a high-quality protein in the first position. As gross as it may sound, what you want to see listed first is the name of the animal that is in the bag or in the can. In other words, I want it to say chicken or duck or salmon or venison or beef, um, the actual name of the animal. When terms like poultry and fish are used, um, that can be sometimes skeptical. If it's poultry, for instance, it could be chicken. It could be duck, it could be turkey, it could be a combination of any of those. And we're actually finding that a lot of our dogs and cats are suffering from chicken allergies, believe it or not. So you want to know what it is. Also, if they don't call out the name of the animal, it may include parts other than the meats and the organ meats. It may include beaks, feet, intestines, and feathers. I've read some of the research and they're trying to tell me that there's a certain amount of protein even in feathers. But I'm sure for our furry best friends, we'd rather give them the good quality meats and organ meats. So look for the chicken, the turkey, the salmon, the venison, the lamb, um, whatever, you know, the protein it is you're feeding your pet, that that is listed first. And I've said a really interesting word over the last several minutes, meats. Hmm. I've driven across this country three times now. Um, I've lived in rural areas and much more citified areas. 
And I've seen a lot of animals grazing along the road, but I've never seen a meat. So look for beef, for chicken, for duck, for turkey, for salmon, and so on. Um, again, that's another one of those skeptical terms. And we really want to find the good whole meats, um, not the byproducts. Um, we can really take a cue from Mother Nature, stuff that is fresh. I just grabbed a few things out of my refrigerator today. You see there's some carrots, there's broccoli, there's actually the blueberries I've been picking from the garden and making jam with. There's an apple here. These are the kind of things we want to eat and we want our pets to eat. Now dogs, cats, and humans are three completely different species. Um, what may be good for us may not be good for them. Uh, chocolate is a great example. They're trying to tell us that the darker the chocolate, the higher the flavonoids and the antioxidants um, for our heart. But um, it also contains a caffeine-like substance called theobromine, which is not good for our pets. So take a pet for a steak glass and I'll tell you more about that later. But what I want you to realize that there are certain things, um, fruits and vegetable wise, that are fabulous for our pets. But dogs and cats have a much shorter intestinal tract than we do. Food actually sits in their stomach longer than it does in ours. Um, not surprising why sometimes your pet will upchuck his meal hours afterwards and it still looks pretty much like it did before it went down or there's still a large amount of it. It stays in the stomach longer, but then it has to get through that shorter intestinal tract much more quickly. And because of that, it's hard for it to break down the cellulose, the plant fiber. So for your pets to really get the best value out of fruits and vegetables, you need to either chop them very fine, puree them, or lightly steam them. And in certain pet foods, they already come that way. So that's excellent. Now, um, obviously, if you're getting a, a frozen um, raw or cooked food, it's preserved because it's frozen. If you're getting a kibble, um, very often they spray it with all kinds of preservatives that might be in fact cancer causing. However, there are other companies out there that are really trying to spray it with vitamin C and E's and tocopherols that are much more natural. And again, that's getting me back to my mother nature thing about really um, feeding our pets whole fresh produce and wholesome foods. You want to stay away from the fillers. Soy, corn, and wheat just pretty much keep out of the mix. Um, more and more pets are getting all kinds of skin allergies from these fillers as well as digestive problems. And very often, you know, we're all on budgets these days. And, you know, if we can save a little bit on the pet food, but we think it's still pretty good, we often want to do that. But what I really encourage you to think about is the holistic view. And what I'm talking about here is that you may be spending more on the pet food but you'll then be saving money on the veterinarian bills because your pet won't be showing up for allergies and skin problems and digestive upsets and, you know, even more serious things. So, you know, it's important, um, just like with your car, what you put in it, what you're going to get out of it. I know there's something where you can now run your cars on vegetable oil, but you put mayonnaise and sand in your car and you're not going to get very far. So the same thing with your dog or cat. You want him to thrive during that time he is on this planet with us. So really, you know, try to do the best with figuring out your budgets um, to get the best quality food that your budget will allow. And like I said, you may then be saving um, money on veterinary bills because you're going to really be feeding and nourishing your pet. So I talked about not doing preservatives, staying away from the fillers. Um, I'm not saying, though, you necessarily have to stay away from grains. There are some great grains, and there's a company that I want to talk to you about today um, because they have a, a cool way of mixing it up for our pets so that our pets don't have to eat the same thing every day. Um, they're called Paw Tree, P-A-W-T-R-E-E, -E, and if you'll look at this post afterwards, you'll see a link where you can go right there and explore all the great things. But what I wanted to bring up right now about them is they do dog food, they do cat food, they do seasonings, they do treats, they do oils, they do all kinds of cleanup um, products and shampoos and things too. But I mainly want to talk about the seasonings. However, I've got to touch on the pet food in that they do have great grains. Um, you may go to uh, some 
pet foods and you're reading those labels and you're trying to stay away from the corn, the soy and the wheat, and you're going to find some that have oatmeal and brown rice, which is great. It's really a great alternative to our pets. It's much more highly digestible. I mean, when was the last time you saw a wolf, you know, eating a stalk of wheat in nature? It doesn't happen. Um, most of the times animals in the wild get their grains from the bellies of a smaller animal they're consuming. So it's almost like it's pre-digested. But pottery puts in things like lentils and barley, as well as like some of the brown rices and the oatmeal. Um, that can really be, you know, helpful and, and give the energy your dog or cat might need. So do check that out. But what I want to talk to you about regarding them is their seasonings. They're called paw pairings. And they came to me in this awesome possum box here. Haiku was so excited. He could smell it right away. Paws up, tongues out. My paw box is here, he said. And when you open it up, the first thing you get is an awesome note from Roger Morgan. And I'm going to have to tell you, I'm going to almost cry over this because um, I'm a, I've been associated with paw tree a little bit on the periphery for, I guess, about a year, year and a half now. I kind of um, stepped away when we made our big cross-country move, but I just adore these people. Um, everybody I've met through this organization is just fabulous, as kind, friendly, helpful, and generous as can be. And Roger Morgan, the CEO, um, he, he's not your typical CEO. He knows everybody. He talks to people. He picks up the phone when somebody, you know, even in the lower ranks gets a promotion and, you know, um, remembers them and makes everybody feel important. And I think that's just such an important thing because so many of us in businesses, and I know a lot of you listening have small businesses, pet sitting businesses, maybe they're even growing and expanding and they're not considered small anymore. But we always know that we have to make, put the client first. Well, something that Pawtree knows is that they have to put the employees, the staff, the, the, um, the worker bees first, too, because you really have to show people that you're appreciated. And I think that's something Pawtree does exceptionally well. But back to the paw pairings. So you get this cool little paw box, and you open it up, and there's this great big bit of rolled paper here that um, has nothing but recipes on it. Great things you can make for your pet. Chicken cacciatore, Kismas din din, German shepherd's pie. And if you'll read them, there are all these wonderful ingredients. Turkey, apples and cinnamon, um, wild Alaskan salmon, cranberries, green beans, sweet potatoes. It's just all the things I'm talking about that you get from Mother Nature. And then inside you can get treats and you can get these amazing seasonings. Now, we haven't had these bottles very long, and you can see Haiku's already, whoops, I'm off camera here. Haiku's already dug into these. They are just fabulous. What they are is freeze-dried whole protein. Um, more than 30% of each bottle is protein. Then there are eight different fruits and vegetables. And I'll tell you, just before I came online today, I went to the refrigerator to see what I have, and I couldn't come up with eight fruits and pro and excuse me fruits and vegetables in my refrigerator yes nancy they absolutely do make cat food i'm looking here and thank you tracy and barbara and everybody else that have been joining in um, they make dog food and cat food and these seasonings are more than 30 percent of that freeze-dried protein protein sorry getting a little tongue-tied here there's fruits and vegetables eight of them in there and then a special blend of vitamins and this is how you can make the same food you're giving your pet every day. Um, I'm just looking over here. Um, oh, and Paige is already answering um, for Nancy. Yes, both soft food and dry for our kitty cats. Um, but this, these great seasonings, this one is chicken medley. There's a beef medley. There's a turkey medley. I know there's a salmon as well. Um, they, they smell awesome. I wanted Haiku to come out and he took a nap. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's, it looks like the rain's coming in. I walked him long this morning. So I guess that's what happens sometimes. But, you know, this is almost, I, I think we were referring to this as one time, forgive me, everybody, but it's kitty crack in that they get, the cats go crazy for it. And you know what? The dogs do too. It's good stuff. And you shake it on top of the food you already have. So I think it's a great step if you're not even ready to make any changes in your pet's diet. Because by adding this, it's gonna be something they come for. It's got good quality protein, 
vegetables and fruits in it along with vitamins and it's just going to make them excited about meal time now you know my soft spot is senior pets in particular and often when animals get older sometimes their their sense of smell wanes a bit and we have to do things to encourage them to eat and you know up until this point my big go-to thing had always been saying put some you know omega-3s put some really smelly salmon oil on it because they'll smell that and they'll come running for the food well i certainly um don't have I, I certainly um, don't have any problems with the salmon oil. I still use it. I use hokey oil, um, which actually comes from New Zealand, from a company called Newflins, which um, makes an amazing omega-3. But these paw pairings are just fabulous. You don't have to worry about refrigerating them. Um, they, as long as you close the lid here, they stay, stay good for a long time. However, they're not going to last very long with your pets because it's going to be the go-to thing. So whether you have a finicky kitty cat who's young or an older dog or a cat um, that might be losing some interest in food, their, their sense of smell may be waning, this is going to get them to eat their food. Now, of course, I'm going to want you to start from the bottom up and read those pet food labels and make sure that you're giving them the best quality food you can. But this is certainly a start. And let me just pour it out here a little bit. I know this isn't the greatest camera here for you guys to see. Whoops. I never know if I go right or left, but you see there what it looks like? And you just shake it onto their food. Um, you can shake it on their dry food. You can shake it on their wet food. Heck, um, you can probably bury a pail in it too if you need to um, give them that at mealtime. But like I said, each paw box comes with all these amazing recipes that you can make out of the paw pairings and some of the great treats. And the treats are freeze-dried um, protein as well with fruits and vegetables mixed in. And they're really simple to make. Let me just see if I can spy one really quickly here. Had it not been such a a crazy week I probably would have made some ahead to show you but um, here you use chicken apples and kale paw treats so you know you got the kale that's a super food for our pets um, then the turkey medley paw pairings which are right here and then you also can use the duck paw pairings too you break up some of the paw treats into three or four small pieces and sprinkle them on top of your pet's food then you shake um, both the turkey and the duck medley um, on top, add a dash of goodness and stir with love and serve immediately. So it's really, you know, not um, hard to put these meals together. You're not changing your whole, pet's whole diet because, you know, anytime you change a food, you need to do it slowly. You start off with a quarter or less even of the new food and three quarters of your old food. And, you know, as a week goes by, you then get closer to half and half and then still three quarters and a quarter. You, you know, it should take close to a month to really change over a pet's food but this is a great way to give them a different taste sensation every day you can get a selection um, some of you out there I see some of you tuned in how many of there are there are there five different um, flavors of seasonings let me know um, I'm just trying to read some of the um, in the, the comments here Yes, yes, sprinkle on top of wet or dry. I said that eight, pro eight protein varieties and seven superfoods blended into it. So um, this, is, this is just wonderful stuff. And it's not just something made up by somebody. Paw Tree has veterinarians and nutritionists on, you know, on board that are looking at all this stuff and creating it. And your pet just is going to think you actually spent time in the kitchen cooking for him. So how great is that? Um, we all want to be the person our dog or cat thinks we are, right? So it's just a wonderful item to add to your, your shopping list. It's good stuff for your pet. So look at the, um, the post I have here. I've got the link so you can go right to it and explore. I know Nancy Lewis in particular, um, um, whose link that will go to, I believe it's pawtree.com for pet health, the number four pet health. Um, we'll be happy to answer any questions you have. And she's telling me right now that there are seven different flavors and recipes. So um, really consider paw pairings. Really go to your cupboards right now and read those pet food labels. Um, we're going to only get out of 
our pet, the health of our pet, what we're putting into them. And it's just so important. It's probably a lesson a lot of us can learn as well in that, you know, sometimes we'll go through that drive through a little bit too often. And, you know, there are drive throughs You can make better choices these days, but just because it's a drive through sometimes we don't want to. So, you know, you stay healthy, get your pets healthy so that they can spend many more, you know, days on this planet with us by our side. And when um, I hang up here today, go to www.pawtree, that's P-A-W-T-R-E-E dot com slash the number four pet health and see what you can find for your precious feline or canine friend. So thank you guys for listening. Go to my blog. That's also listed on the post here because I've got a whole lot more details. And I, you know, I don't don't want to um, tell you everything that's in the, the written word. Go ahead and read it for yourself and learn about what some of the different things like the 95% rule means and what flavor is and what holistic or organic really means in our food. That's all in my blog. But I just wanted to share this with you that it's your obligation and your privilege and honor because you get to share your life with a dog or a cat to find the best quality food for him or her. And do realize what works for your puggle may not be the best food for your shepherd. Even if you have three um, golden retriever puppies from the same litter, it's possible that the best food isn't the same food for all of them. So you need to tune in and watch how they're responding to that food. Again, is there energy in their eyes? Is their coat shiny? Their skin not flaky? Can you feel the ribs but not see them? Because just like us, they have allergies and they process things differently. And it's important that you tune in because you are the best judge of the best quality food for your pet. But you can only do that if you research and pay attention. Love you all for loving your pets. Come back again and see me. I'm the Pet Safety Crusader, and I want to help you make a difference in the life of a pet.